Hello my fellow researchers, it's Jason here with another video in this video series and in this video I'm going to be going over the repeated measures t-test and the repeated measures t-test is similar to the independent measures t-test but in this case we have uh, the same group of participants in both samples. So basically you're going to be doing some kind of pre-treatment, post-treatment comparison or a time one and time two, uh, something like that. Basically, you, you might have, in this case, 30 individuals, and you're gonna give them a test on maybe a depression test or an IQ test or, or something. Then you're gonna give them a treatment. Maybe you're gonna give them a pill or you're gonna have them take a course, and then you're gonna measure them on that test again, and you're gonna see if there was any changes. So each person, for example, uh, case number 30 here, this person was measured uh, a, a score of 13, and then after the treatment, they got a score of 26. And so basically, we're trying to see, you know, did the treatment work? Whatever it was, doesn't matter. The point is that each person is measured at time one, and then at time two, and we're trying to see uh, in terms of the entire group of participants, was there any significant difference between time one and time two? And that's different from the independent measures t-test because in the independent measures t-test we have two completely different groups of participants and often it's unrelated to time. It could probably just be at the exact same time each group of participants is being scored on some variable. So in this case, uh, we're going to see, you know, is there a mean difference uh, between these individuals uh, pre-treatment versus post-treatment? And so in order to do that, I'm going to go to analyze. I'm going to go to compare means as usual and we've kind of gone through all these tests already but here we are paired samples t test i'm going to hit that button here and now you can see i have a variable one and variable two and so basically you can choose you know which variable you want to go first uh, but it really doesn't matter in the end i'm just going to put my uh, before or my, my pre-treatment variable first, and then my, my post-treatment variable uh, second. And if you go to options, you can choose your, net, your confidence interval, and I have it here as 95%. And I'm gonna hit continue, and then I'm gonna hit okay. It's as easy as that. And now you can see here, we have our descriptive statistics, uh, test scores before treatment, uh, the mean of the sample or of the group was 15.23 and then you have test scores after treatment the mean was 24.37 clearly there's a difference right almost a 10 point difference between uh, before and after treatment but we want to see you know is that a significant difference right because again you know we have a sample of 30 individuals and is that representative of our population in this case this is a hypo hypothetical example so uh, we don't know how big the population is, but we're going to do a paired samples t-test to see how likely is this, uh, is this a t-value or how likely is this t-statistic going to occur based on the variability in our two samples. And so what we see here is a bunch of things. For, for one, we have our mean difference, which is negative 9. And why is it negative? Well, look here. It says test scores before treatment minus test scores after treatment. And if you look before treatment is 15 and after treatment is about 24. So if you were to subtract them, you would get a negative value. So that's that's not surprising. We have our standard deviation and our standard error. Uh, over here we have our confidence interval. So we're looking at a mean difference of at least uh, six points up to 11 points, or we're 95% we're confident that it's gotta be at least six points or 11 points. Um, and then finally, we have our t-statistic, and it is also negative, and that's, well, if you know the t-formula, okay, then that, that's not surprising for you. And then our degrees of freedom. And now, one thing interesting about the degrees of freedom is that it's 29 here, right? And, and because our sample size is, is 30. Um, and that makes sense, because even though, and if you go back to our data here, even though we had, you know, 30 individuals in the, in the pre-treatment, uh, group and then 30 individuals in a post-treatment group um, you might think oh there's 60 individuals and if you were doing an independent samples t-test you would say there are 60 individuals but there's not because again this is a repeated measures t-test 
So that's not surprising either. And very significant. You can see here it's 0 0.000. That is a, a very significant uh, a T statistic. So you would say there is a significant difference between uh, test scores or, or between uh, the group before treatment and, and after treatment in terms of the test scores. Uh, that's the end of, the, of my video. Now I'm just going to mention one thing if you want to uh, hang on here for a second. Uh, I'm going to go back to analyze, compare means, and paired samples t-test. Now what if I had I'd put uh, just reversed these, um, these variables in terms of the order I put them in? Okay, I'm going to click on OK. Well, now you'll notice for one thing that you can actually do more than one t-test at a time, right? I have pair one and pair two. Uh, and the other thing you'll notice is that all the uh, values um, have changed sign, right? So the mean difference now is nine, not negative nine. And the t value is, is, is positive eight, not negative eight. Um, and our confidence interval has been uh, reversed. But again, the point of it is to understand that we're looking at a six point difference or an 11 point difference between the two between the two groups. So, you know, whatever order you want to do your calculations in, that's fine, but fundamentally you just need to understand that we're comparing means. So, it doesn't really matter which mean comes first or after in our equation, for example. So, that's the paired samples t-test or the repeated measures t-test. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. If not, stay tuned for my next video in this video series. Cheers.